Should you learn to code to get a job or to start your own business? I kind of wanted to talk about what the difference would be in the learning process and also some of the things that you should consider if you do in fact want to become an entrepreneur rather than an employee when it comes to learning how to code. It really sets you on a different path when you first start off because you don't have to jump through a lot of the same hoops if you want to become an entrepreneur. But the problem is that there's a lot of different roads that you can take when it comes to becoming an entrepreneur with learning how to code rather than getting a job because getting a job would be way more straightforward than becoming an entrepreneur with code. You have more options when it comes to starting your own business, building your own startup, your own SaaS, micro SaaS, content, whatever it is, versus just learning to code and get a job. I will say that there's a lot of similar things that you have to learn to start off with. I'm mostly gonna talk about web dev because I feel that web development is the easiest in the sense that more people need websites than mobile applications and game development or any other type of software development. And it's probably just gonna be the path of least resistance when it comes to learning and like getting clients or building content. And I also feel that web development is one of the more popular options and it's more widely used in general. So let's just start off by saying you're definitely still gonna to need to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's just gonna be necessary no matter which way you go, whether it be getting a job or learning how to code to start your own business. The thing is that the path after that can be very, very different. A lot of people will often say like, hey, should I learn WordPress? I've made videos on it before and I wanna to touch on that one very quickly. If you are learning to code to get a job, I highly advise against going and learning WordPress beyond maybe spending a week or two on building like one or two WordPress websites for fun or for someone else. That's all you need because chances are you're probably not gonna work in WordPress if you decide to go and get a front end developer job or a full stack job. You might, but you probably won't. It'd probably be more beneficial for you to go and learn a framework that is widely used. Also, there's a lot of pay discrepancy and WordPress developers in a corporate setting don't make as much as let's say like a React developer or a Java developer. A lot of them work for agencies and a lot of the work is, I would say, less software development and more WordPress work. Drag and drop, WYSIWYG, editing stuff, installing and updating different plugins and themes and things like that. Where if you learned WordPress for entrepreneurship, it could actually be very lucrative. And there's a lot of memes and jokes about like PHP and WordPress developers driving Lambos. PHP is actually one of the lower paying programming languages. But if you talk about freelancing, PHP devs do very well. And also jQuery. I have many videos where I tell you like, don't learn jQuery if you're trying to get a job as a developer. Again, take that with a grain of salt because it probably wouldn't be bad to visit jQuery for a week or two and get an understanding of it because there are a lot of places that still use jQuery. You can probably find a lot of freelance work with jQuery because it's all over the place. There's a lot of websites that use jQuery, still use jQuery, and will probably continue to keep using jQuery because they don't plan on getting off of it anytime soon. There's a lot of websites out there that don't want to rewrite their entire code base into the new trendy JavaScript framework, and they're just happy using PHP and jQuery. But there's not a lot of those jobs if you're trying to be an employee. There tend to be a lot more of those jobs if you go freelancing. So when you start getting into the weeds of which tech stack you should learn or whether or not you should learn a certain content management system like WordPress, that's where you start to diverge between taking the employee route versus taking the entrepreneurial route. That's where there's a lot of it depends what you're trying to do comes into play. It's the same for if you're trying to get a job. Most of the time after you learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you're gonna hear learn a front-end framework like React or Angular or Vue, and then learn some back-end stuff, learn some database stuff. And then you might even be told to go learn about algorithms, build some projects, get your portfolio going, get your resume ready, get ready to interview and all those things where it's not the same for an entrepreneur route. And I know that I've mostly talked about freelancing, right? Because that feels like the most common path for entrepreneurship with learning how to code. But the truth is that you can create your own SaaS product. And at that point, 
the framework that you want to pick is the one that you can build in the fastest. This might even mean using no code tools. This might mean using WordPress. This might mean using HTML and CSS to just build a landing page. When you get to the point of trying to build a business with programming, you don't need that much to build a CRUD app. And the tech that you use doesn't really matter. It also doesn't matter so much if you're getting new freelance clients, they don't care about the tech that you use. You're right back to whatever you build in the fastest is what matters. You don't have to sell Mary and Dan's bakery using Next.js or using React versus Vue or using React versus Angular or you know why Java is better than PHP. Like they don't give a shit. They want a website. They just want you to build something for them. And also your customers that you're trying to fix problems for by building whatever SaaS idea you may have, they also don't give a shit what framework you're using. They just want their problem solved. They don't care if it's written in WordPress. They don't care if you're using different services to handle a lot of your backend stuff rather than writing a lot of stuff yourself they don't care as long as it gets the job done and it isn't blatantly buggy and slow in a software development job there's way more hoops and things to jump through there's way more vetting that goes on in getting your first job and there's a lot more stuff that you have to prepare for versus getting your first freelance client could just be as easy as knocking on somebody's door and saying hey you want a website that actually might be a little weird if you just randomly knocked on some stranger's door and told them that, but you get what I mean. It really does come down to like just getting a few clients. You don't have to show them your resume. You don't have to do algorithms for the interview. You don't have to do a whole lot except say like, hey, I can build this for you. Again, I'm referring to freelancing a lot because that's probably gonna be like the easiest way and probably the first way into entrepreneurship with using code. But eventually you might want to build your own thing. You might wanna build your own business. You might have business ideas that code can really help propping up and getting started that eventually don't need your coding expertise. But you can maybe build your own website to draw business to something else that you do. You can just figure out what you're trying to sell, what you're trying to fix, and what you're trying to do with your product and you can build those things. There's a lot involved in the business aspect of things when it comes to building your own SaaS or your own startup that I don't wanna to get too in the weeds of, but I want to just give you the gist of what it involves. It doesn't involve as much as getting a job. And that's where I feel that it's almost as if I wish I would have taken that path or thought about that when I first started because I didn't think of that as an option. I only saw one road and the road was to get a job as a developer. I never thought about potentially making money on my own with it. Even the freelancing stuff that I did with the first few websites that I built and the things that I built that I put on my resume as freelancing work was really to just put things on my resume so that I could get a job. It wasn't really for me to find more freelance clients and it wasn't really for me to build my freelancing portfolio. It was really just for me to get a job. And I never thought about all the possibilities and potential that code could bring me as far as creating my own business. I didn't think about those things. It was, it was not until years later, now recently, that I've actually started thinking about those things. And I feel that many people make videos about learning how to code with the mindset of the person watching the video is trying to get a job. And that is the common path that many people take in every field. And I wanna start talking about more potential entrepreneurial routes with programming because it's kind of what I'm into right now. Maybe this video wasn't as thorough and involved as it could have been because I can't give you a step-by-step -step guide because I'm still trying to figure that stuff out. But I do wanna say that you should have that at the forefront of your mind when you are learning how to code because it does dictate the things that you need to learn and the things that you need to get going. And I will say that learning the code in order to start your own business, be an entrepreneur, get into freelancing involves a lot less just learning, jumping through hoops, preparation than it does to get a job. We all know the path of getting a job for web development is like learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, front end framework, back end, database, CRUD functionality. You got to learn Git, you got to build a resume portfolio, all that stuff that I mentioned but freelancing and starting your own business 
literally you can do that with like just HTML and CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. Very, very minimal stuff. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope it wasn't too short. If there's something else that you want me to get into more detail on that I may have just glossed over in this video, let me know and I'll try to make a video on that. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.